We need to both accept ourselves and want to grow at the same time. If we accept ourselves without wanting to grow, we would simply hang around all day, do nothing and watch TV all the time while eating crisps. And that is no good. However, the other extreme, only being able to accept yourself if you do your very best and attaching your self-worth to your achievements. And although you're achieving so much, you feel like a failure and beat yourself up is also not the way to go. So how can we make sure that we don't go to either of these extremes? How can we accept ourselves and want to grow at the same time? So the first tip would be to understand that these aren't opposites, even though it may feel like it at first. They don't really exclude each other. We actually need self-love to develop ourselves because, for example, discipline is needed for self-improvement. And discipline actually, even if it doesn't seem like it, is a form of self-love because being disciplined is doing what's best for you even though you don't feel like it. It's kind of like, let's say, the love of a parent. They want you to do all this hard stuff, all this uncomfortable stuff, not because they like seeing you feel bad, but simply because they know that in the long term it's better for you. So discipline, as you can see, is kind of a form of self-love. Another way in which we need self-acceptance to grow, and this would then be the second tip, is that there are lots of studies that have shown that when we feel better, if you're in a better mood because you're not beating yourself up for what you've done in the past, and because you feel good about yourself, we actually make better choices. So for example, when it comes to food choices, those who felt good evaluated apples higher than candy bars. And in another study, those who felt better chose grapes over sweets. And then there also was another study on women, and these women were on a diet. And these women were asked to taste a donut. And of course, when they had tasted this donut, they had broken their diet. And then these women were split into three groups. So one group was the control group, they didn't tell them to do anything. Then the second group were told that they should feel compassionate for themselves. So yes, they had broken their diet, but it happens, they shouldn't feel too bad about it. Um, they should still be compassionate with themselves. And then the third group was the self-esteem group, and they should simply just write down what they like about themselves. And then after that, these three groups were sent to different rooms, and there they were asked to taste sweets. However, what the participants didn't know in the study is that the researchers, after they were done tasting the sweets, would go into each room and measure how much they had eaten. And it turned out that those who ate the least were in the self-compassion group. And surprisingly, those in the self-esteem group who simply had to write what they find good about themselves, they didn't really do much better than the control group. But not only when it comes to food choices, do we make better decisions when we're in a good mood. Also, when it comes to, for example, procrastination, another study found that those who were able to forgive themselves after they had procrastinated would procrastinate less in the future. But how do we know in the first place whether we're being too strict on ourselves or whether we're accepting ourselves too much? And this would then be the third tip. I think the best way to tell whether we're putting too much or too little pressure on ourselves is to ask ourselves what exactly is driving our behaviour. If it's that you are doing this behaviour because you know it's good for you and you want to do what's best for you because you love yourself, then you haven't really got a problem with being too strict on yourself, then everything's okay. However, if the reason why you're doing it, if your motivation behind this behaviour is that you need to do it because otherwise you're going to be unhappy with yourself or that you're doing it to impress other people because you need external validation because you don't feel like you're worth much, then you are definitely being too strict on yourself. If you're doing this behaviour to compensate for who you are, then you're in big trouble. Then you definitely have to work on self-acceptance. And then the fourth tip, which is kind of similar, is a tip from Benjamin Hardy, he's an organisational psychologist. 
he said that they're basically two different forms of passion, two different kinds of passion. So one passion is harmonious passion, whereas the other is obsessive passion. So the main difference between these two is that harmonious passion is when you want something, whereas obsessive passion is when you feel that you need something. Harmonious passion is intrinsic and it doesn't get in the way of other things in your life. Whereas obsessive passion is something that you feel you need so much that you do it even though it brings negative results to other parts in your life. So basically addictions also of course fall in the category of obsessive passions because it, addictions are usually when we go on doing something although we know very well that it's causing harm in our lives. Obsessive passion is when we feel like we need something to be happy or to be a somebody. The way you will know whether it's an obsessive passion or not is that obsessive passions often lead to short-term behaviour that don't serve us in the long term. They lead to very unhealthy behaviour. In the context of self-development, if you have an obsessive passion for improving yourself, that would basically be doing something that's unhealthy, that brings you maybe a lot of results in the short term, but is really detrimental in the long run. That could, for example, be burnout. And it could also be if you feel like your self-worth is based on your achievement, is attached to your performance, and you feel like you need to improve yourself to be someone, then that is also an obsessive passion. Whereas if you're doing it because you know it's good for yourself and because it brings all these wonderful things into your life, then that would be a harmonious passion. And then the fifth tip is basically a personal opinion of mine that I've come up with. So I think that our self-talk should be very loving and kind. Because beating ourselves up doesn't really help us. It only makes us feel worse. So I think that our self-talk should be less strict. However, I do believe that our actions should be very strict. And that we should be very ambitious in our actions. If your self-talk starts becoming strict mean, maybe even offensive, then you need to work on accepting yourself. However, if you start accepting the fact that you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, then you need to work on self-development. Then you're accepting yourself too much and then you need to work more on developing yourself. So I suppose that if you have difficulties with self-love and acceptance, that you might have very, very low confidence and self-esteem. If that's the case, you can watch this video here.